Hi everyone, welcome to the video. It's just a, a quick little video to show you everything that the little display on the dashboard has to offer in my Seat Leon. It's a 2017 model FR. Uh, I'm not sure if it's any different to the uh, sort of the non FR models, but um, yeah, if it's if it's got this display, it should offer everything um that that all the other ones do so let's dive right in as you can see i'm running a little bit low on fuel there but um this is the main interface it's got your driving data assist navigation audio which is well it, it can be the radio or any um bluetooth music that you've got going paired with your phone um we've got telephone vehicle status and I think we're back to the start again so normally when I'm driving I um, I have it on driving data so if we go into that menu you've got quite an array of um, options and, and figures that it can show you there normally I'll have it on average consumption so in that uh, you've got three different modes there. You can change them by clicking the little wheel on the steering wheel. So you've got sin start, which is when you turn the car on and you go on a, a little journey somewhere. Then if you sorry, if you press the wheel again, that's long term. I think on the trip computer, as long as you don't reset it, it will uh, sort of keep an average um, since you last reset that trip computer. And then if you press it one more time, it's got your average consumption since you last refueled the car. So then on to the, the next one, you've got sort of, uh, I think that's current consumption. Obviously, I'm not driving, so it's not showing anything at the moment. But um, yeah, that jumps up and down. It's it's not one that, one that I find really useful unless, I don't know, if you just decide to put your foot down and see how low you can make the MPGs go which can be sometimes quite amusing. I think the lowest I've ever had it was about six mile per gallon, but it doesn't stay that low for long. Um, then you've got your coolant temp, oil temperature. Obviously, they're all set at zero because the car's not being turned on for a good few hours. This is uh, a warning, um, which you can set it. So um, any speed, I don't know if there's a lowest one, uh, you know, if there isn't, then it's anything from between one mile per hour up to, I think it goes up to 155 mile an hour. Um, so whatever speed you set it at, if you get to that speed, it'll uh, display a little warning, a uh, visual warning and um, an audible tone just to let you know that you've crept up to that speed. It's it's good if you, if you say, on the motorway or anything and um, you don't have to pay too much attention to the speedo it'll just sort of give you a little nudge saying slow down um, then you've got your current speed your average speed uh, again it's similar to the average mpg you can click the wheel and see what your average speed is on the three different modes then uh, you've got distance which is same again you've got your long term since the refuel and um, in, on your current journey or the last journey that you did. Um, Travelling time, same again. Then you've got your... Com uh, you can sh basically, this shows you... Um, it can sort of... Well, let me give you an example. The car's off at the moment, so obviously I'm not using any fuel. Um, and again, this isn't too relevant because the car's currently turned off, but... If you turn on the aircon, it tells you that you, you know, it will use a little bit more fuel than if it wasn't on. Then another thing you could, for example, turn on the the heated mirrors. Um, you can have the heated windscreen, rear windscreen as well. That won't actually turn on because the car's turned off. But you can imagine if you've got all these things running at the same time, it will use up a little bit more fuel than than um, normal 
then yeah so i think we've got to the end of that one so that was everything just in the driving data then if you go into the next one you've got assist systems now i can imagine if you had a more higher spec car like i say this one's just the 1.4 fr but if you had say something like the cupra um or something it might have a few extra features um but on this one all it's got is front assist which is actually better than than it may sound um basically if you're if i'd always recommend if your car's got this i'd keep it turned on um if you're approaching a stationary vehicle um you can set the level of assistance i think there's low medium or high um i've currently got it on um high sensitivity um basically if you're approaching a vehicle uh, that stopped in front of you it will uh, display a, a rather loud audible warning um, paired with a visual warning on the dashboard um, alerting you that, that there's a stationary vehicle in front of you if you don't start slowing down um, the car will actually brake for you now I've never had this come into practice myself it's, it's, it's happened a few times I'll be honest where it's actually popped up um, with the warning but I've always been aware and, and slowed down myself but uh, it's not something that I want to test and try out to see if it works but it's nice to know that it's there just in case so yeah like I say if, you've, if your car does have that I would highly recommend keeping it on um, then we've got navigation so again if your car's got the built-in satellite navigation um, you can access a few features from this display here. So at the moment, it's just got my current location and the direction that the car's facing. Um, if you scroll down on the wheel, you can. It shows you all your recent um, addresses that you've been to. Um, so if you click one of those, or select, you know, scroll up and down, find one, and then click the wheel in it loads up the address and all you can basically do from this screen is either start or cancel that so if you click to start it loads up the uh, sort of turn by turn instructions there it's got your total distance left to travel in the top left and the estimated time of arrival in the top right again from from here there's nothing much you can really do apart from cancel the navigation so I will do that now and move on to the next one. So let's just go back out of there. So that was navigation. Here you've got audio, which at the moment, because I'm not playing any songs through my phone via Bluetooth, it's just got all the um, radio stations. Now these aren't my preset radio stations. It looks like it's just listing every single radio station it can pick up, which... There's quite a few of them. Um, half of those I've never even listened to before. But yeah, that's the uh, the audio side of things. And you can just click on one of those and that's that's that. There's nothing more you can do with that that display there. Onto the telephone. Um, I have got, like I said, I've got my phone paired up at the moment because, well, whenever I get in the car, it's, it automatically links up. So that displays... Um, the current phone network and signal strength and battery and that's also displayed on the if I just pan that across you can see that over there in the corner um, you've got the signal strength and it doesn't actually tell you much else but it's telling me that I've currently got a message that I need to read as well so I'll just bring that back into the middle, try and get this squared up. Excuse the shoddy cameraman. So yeah, um, so you can leave that just as it is. Um, if you do get an incoming call, it will pop up with the caller ID, whether it be their name, if it's stored in your phone book or if not just the number, and you have the option of accepting or uh, declining the call um, so from this screen you can just scroll up or down um, go through your various recent calls 
then it's simply just a case of clicking one of those. So yes, I believe that is probably everything that there is to cover on this display. Um, yeah, there's, like I say, I've been through everything else. There's, there's uh, nothing else, that, nothing that I think I've left out there. Um, yeah, any questions, please drop those in the comments section below. Um, I've done a few videos on this car in the past. If you want to check out my channel, there's um, a general sort of infotainment review going uh, going through all the, the options and menus in depth on that. And then I've also done a Android Auto review on this car as well, which doesn't really differ between um, car, you know, car to car. It's, as long as the car's got Android Auto, it's pretty much all the same and uniform um, along, along the mall. So yes, uh, feel free to check out those videos. Um, like I say, if there's any questions or anything you want to ask about the uh, this car or the video itself, please drop them in the comments. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.